The parallax effect by nature is inherent to a three-dimensional space, so video games set within this dimension will naturally have the effect. However, for 2D games, we have to attempt to fake this effect to make the environment feel more immersive. Parallax is an effect where your eyes perceive objects that are closer to be moving faster than objects that are further away. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to recreate this effect in your own games. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so we are inside of Unity or your game engine of choice, and you have this really nice looking background, but you want it to have a little parallax, right? Because it looks good, uh, you've set it, you got it all set up, so it's all nice and layered. However, uh, when you click play, you know, obviously nothing happens because one, we're not moving, and also two, there's no parallax script. We're gonna get that all working in the next 10 minutes, or less. Alright, so just to show you what I have set up, each background is actually uh, rendered as a quad with a material on it. That material uh, is set as a unlit transparent material, uh, which you can find in Unity if you go under the shader and you go unlit, uh, and you select transparent. So pretty easy. And the reason why we're using a quad instead and using a material instead of a sprite is so we can make use of uh, this texture offset right here because as you can see let's just select one that's a bit more prominent and we use the x it actually moves this now this is actually a very important thing that we have to do in the import settings is as you can see uh it stretches right and we obviously don't want that to happen what we would probably want is it for it to repeat uh so let's go ahead and select every single one of our images our sprites uh and let's set this to down here the wrap mode uh, from clamp we're gonna set this to repeat now we click apply and what this is gonna do is if we apply an offset now as you can see it's gonna repeat instead of just clamping and setting as uh, a flat line uh, and this is very important for a parallax shader cool um, if you're in a ga another game engine and you don't actually have access to offset you might need to do a little shader magic um, and code it yourself let's get right into the coding so let's create a script and we're just gonna name it parallax Let's double click this to open it up in Visual Studio. And we can get rid of these two comments. <laughs> uh, and let's also get rid of the top two uh, using statements. Cool, let's create, let's serialize this field and let's make a private material uh, list or uh, array, sorry. And let's call this the background mats. Let's then create a public float and we can call this X. This is the time value. This is the x change that other scripts will add to the parallax in order to achieve the parallax effect uh, we can then create a private float array uh, and let's call this parallax scales and what this is is as i mentioned before parallax happens in layers right so the furthest most background layer will move a lot slower than the foreground and that's just what happens in real life as well when you look at something and you move things that are closer to you look like they are moving faster than things behind so that's what this effect achieves and that's what we're actually going to be setting in the start method right now uh so we can go parallax scales is equal to new float and uh it actually auto filled that perfectly uh we're setting it equal to the background master length because parallax scales we need one for each material so it's just setting it equal to the length uh we can then loop through um the let's in context here instead of background mats let's actually loop through the parallax scales dot length and for each parallax scale we are going to set it so parallax scales of i uh is equal to and this is just what i like to do we go uh background oh not background <laughs> background mats uh dot length uh, minus i because what we want uh, is to invert it right so the furthest most one moves slower like i said if we were to do if we were to not use i it would be in ascending order rather than descending order awesome inside update we want to apply the parallax to every single material we are going to loop through all the parallax scales and we're going to calculate a parallax value calculate the texture offset as a vector two uh, and then assign the offset to the material. All right, let's create a float called parallax, and let's set it equal to our parallax scales multiplied by our x value. We can then come down and create a vector two, and let's call this our background 
target spot. And let's set this equal to a new vector 2. We can input our parallax and instead of zero, let's just in case we have other offsets going on, let this let's set this as background maps of i dot text I think it's main texture offset, yep, dot y. And now we can assign this, right? So backgrounds, background maps of i dot main texture offset is equal to our background target pot. And that should be how simple it is. Let's add this in. Awesome. So what we can do is we can create, I think I have seven layers, if I am correct. Yes, I am correct. Let's go ahead and assign each material in the inspector. And let's click play. Nothing's going to happen. However, if we move our X value, as you can see, the ones ahead are actually moving a lot uh, a lot slower, uh, faster, sorry, than the ones behind. Uh, and this will probably be more prevalent if we go ahead and we create a public uh, float uh, for the speed. Because obviously we might want to change the speed, or instead of the speed, we can actually call this the scale, which probably makes a little bit more sense. So let's multiply this by our scale. And... Uh, just for just for testing purposes, every frame let's actually offset x uh, plus equals to time dot delta time. Just so we can see the parallax effect in op, uh, in action, you will obviously change the x value in other scripts. Uh, this could be done by the player controller, and you're assigning the x value directly from the player position, or you might uh, have your own other way of doing it. Also, you might actually use the the y value for some reason. If you do, you'd want to assign the y value as well as the x value. Um, now we can set a scale. I think something like 0.01 might look good. Uh, and let's just see how this goes. Yep, look at that. So as you can see, the foreground is moving faster than the background. And it ends up to be this pretty cool effect. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's all working in the inspector and everything. Uh, and if we look at these, it's having an offset added to it. Which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, we, the more we increase the scale, the more parallax you get. You could also add an effect, a, a, a value to change how incrementally the parallax changes. However, we're not going to do that in this tutorial. But uh, how you would do it is you just create another variable, and you would most likely multiply i here by the by the variable. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you found it helpful and you like my videos that I've been posting recently, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. It's been, my channel's actually been blowing up. It's been going crazy. So I thank you guys so much for that support. Uh, also, join the Discord. Um, I'm probably going to be hopefully doing some more stuff on Discord at some point with uh, the community. Uh, I'd love to have you guys there. Anyway, uh, have a great night, morning, daytime, whatever time it is, and have a good one. See you guys. Thanks for watching.